but I personally think his best position is holding, um, you know, in a, in a possession-based team where he can get the ball, he can make short passes, and then when the opportunity is there, he can release really good diagonal balls, release players, find players in space. So Manchester United this summer, as far as I'm concerned, the key position that we needed to strengthen was in central midfield. We've gone out and we signed Jaden Sancho. We're linked with Rafael Varane, a centre-back. Uh, and now we're being linked with a host of central midfielders. Leo Goretzka from Bayern Munich, uh, Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid, and Ruben Neves from Wolves. Now, you on the channel know by now that I love Ruben Neves, and I always have. But there's such an intense debate that happens among United fans. Every single time I mention Ruben Neves' name, some saying he'd be a great signing, some saying he wouldn't. So what better way to find out exactly what sort of player Ruben Neves is than speaking to a Wolves fan like Tom here from Wolves blog. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining me today. And, and the reason I've asked Tom to come on is because I want to get some insight is, into exactly what sort of player Ruben Neves has been at Wolves for the last few years. Because to me, he doesn't really seem like a, like a long shot merchant. And, and Tom, I, I think the best thing to do would be to to talk about how Ruben Neves played last season. You know, where, where would you rank uh, that season in terms of how good Ruben Neves has been at Wolves? Was it his best season? Did he dip off a little bit? How did he play last year? Well, it was his worst season. I can't put it any simpler than that. It was it was the most disappointing season, but it was the most disappointing season we've had as a football club since he's been at the club. You know, we had a meteoric rise from the Championship uh, did very well in the Premiership for two years. And then we just, it was a predictable dip, really, because we weren't going to keep, I think it was impossible for us to just keep climbing and climbing up the Premier League. So, and I think he was a victim of that. Um, I think the team was tired. We had that massive campaign the year before with the Europa League. Um, and to me, last season, he just looked done in to me. Um, he, he just looked like everyone else in the team. And a lot of people in the league, to be honest, they, they, they just looked tired, fatigued. Um, I think it doesn't help with him off the field that he's rapidly expanded his family. I think if you suddenly got two, three kids at home, it, it changes you know your energy levels and stuff. So um, I think it was difficult for him last year. Um, I think he had to adapt his game. I don't think he he was asked to do things that he wouldn't normally do. Um, like he was actually getting into the opponent's penalty area because we weren't scoring any goals. So I think Nuno recognised that the midfield couldn't just sit there as, as a deep line two, as Martinho and Neves really liked to do and were really comfortable in the system. We needed some goals from midfield. So he actually popped up. He scored a header at St. James's Park against Newcastle. Um, he was taking penalties. He scored in the box against Everton from a corner. I mean, it was some of the stuff crazy that we'd never seen from him. But um, I think that showed that he's a versatile player. Um, and also he's an intelligent player. I think he can see what the team needs in a given moment. And he is adaptable to doing that. But but I don't think last season, if you watched his showreel from last season, like, you know, your standard 10-minute YouTube thing, you, you get a really good idea of the player he is because where he's looked at his best for Wolves uh, is in previous years where he's been able to sit deeper, dictate the play with long passes, short passes. He, he, he's a smart player. Um, he idolises Perlo. He always names him as the player he wants to emulate. And I do think there's a lot of similarities in how they play. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I don't think last season was, was fair to judge him, even though his stats were probably quite favourable in terms of goals scored, tackles, um, passes, general. You know, he, he was the top rated midfielder for Wolves last season. But I think it was coloured by the fact we just generally had a pretty naff season. And, you know, and, and, for someone who's associated with free kicks, long range shooting, he just couldn't hit a barn door last season, and I think it, 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 that that effect, that affected his uh, how the fans viewed him last season because we, we've just come to expect such a high standard in, in that one respect that that when you you see free kicks flying left, right, and centre, and they're not troubling the goalkeeper, it suddenly uh, is problematic. I, th I think uh, a point you raised there that was actually going to be my next question is. Um... So with Manchester United, what we need uh, this summer really is a holding midfielder. We're kind of spoiled uh, for quality in terms of the more attack-minded footballers. We've got Paul Pogba, whether he stays or not, that's a separate conversation. We've got Donny van der Beek, Bruno Fernandes. But you spoke there about Ruben Neves being more comfortable sitting as a midfield two alongside Martinho. Is that sort of where his best performances have come 
for Wolves? That's what my question was going to be. What is his most comfortable position being at Wolves? Is it uh, a 4 2 3 1 you guys normally play, or does he sit at the bottom of a 4 3 3? How, how have you got the best out of Ruben Neves over the years that he's been at Wolves? Yeah, well, I mean, when Nuno came to Wolves, he, he famously straight away went to a back three, three with, you know, with wing backs. And then he had two holding midfield players. And one of those has always been Ruben Neves. You know, when we got promoted out of the championship, it was him and Romain Sace. Um, and Romain Sace, who's now, you know, been converted to a centre back, he'd go around, you know, as the hard man putting it around and Ruben had more of a license to get forward in the championship. Um, but I think that's one of the things that shifted when we got into the Premier League, because I think we had to play with a proper deeper two, because obviously the quality improves. You, you can't be as open as you are in the championship because we, we had a lot more quality than teams in the championship. Um, but I do think his best, his best position is playing deep. I think some Wolves fans are always banging the drum for him to be playing further forward, you know, like a De Bruyne, um, you know, getting into the opponent's half, you know, because he can shoot and he can find those key passes. But I personally think his best position is holding, um, you know, in a, in a possession-based team where he can get the ball, he can make short passes. And then when the opportunity's there, he can release really good diagonal balls, release players, find players in space. I mean, on, on YouTube, there's there's I could, I could rattle off four or five clips to go and look at, you know, highlights from games where you really see what he's about. Um, um, but that, that to me is, I, th I think he's slotting very well into that system. I think I d I've, I've watched United quite a lot um, and I've never felt Pogba has ever fitted into the systems that he played. You know, I've always felt like he's uncomfortable when he's asked to play deep. Um, he gives the ball away. He's not smart in those defence, in his own defensive third. Um, and I think I've always thought, you know, someone like Ruben Neves or even Jean Moutinho would, would have done well for Man United in, in, with the current setting. Yeah, uh, well, our setup for the last couple of years has definitely been it's a 4 2 3 1. We've got Fred and McTominay who are quite limited. Uh, you know, they're good kind of box to box tenacious players, but they're very limited in terms of breaking the lines and they tend to pass it sideways laterally, allows the defence to sort of sit in shape. And as soon as they sit in shape, it's very hard for us to break it down. So that's why we need to switch this year, in my opinion switch to a 4-3-3, one holding mid with two more aggressive, attack-minded midfielders in front of them, which is why that concept of someone, maybe Ruben Nevers, maybe, you know, Wilfred and Didi would be a more typical out-and-out -out defensive midfielder, but we haven't been linked with anybody, really. Um, in terms of uh, Ruben Neves, in terms of the press, how, how press-resistant is he? Is he very comfortable with, like, incisive, quick movement, quick passes, or is he someone... You know, you say that he's played in a midfield two uh, alongside Martinez. That's something I don't really think United are going towards this year. It seems like we're switching to the 4-3-3. So whoever that comes in, if someone does come in, they kind of have to play that position on their own. Do you think he'd be able to do that? Or is he really more comfortable playing in a two? I don't know. We're good players around him. You know, there's always going to be a pass on for him. He's one of those players, if there's a pass on for him, he's always going to be a great player. And I always think with, with the difference is between, you know, Man United and, and what he's, he's done at Wolves. His Wolves have always been a counter-punching team, really. Um, that he, he's, he's very good at pressing and harrowing the, you know, harrowing the opposition. He's not a, he's not a midfield enforcer um, and he, he's not an indeedy. He's not going to carry the ball forwards, really. Um, but he's just going to sit there and, and he's going to dictate the tempo of the game with passes you know if you want to compare him to a, a man united player from the past you, you'd look at someone like michael carrick and what what he was able to do for man united in in that great team that they had with you know with the uh rooney ronaldo kind of era but i i, I personally think he, he'd do very well whether you play him as a, in a one or a two just on the basis that i think he's an intelligent footballer and he's a player who you know, he knows when to hold on to the ball. He knows when to play a short pass. He knows when to get it out of his feet and move it. You know, he, he people, you know, all players make mistakes. I'm not saying he's got a, you know, an unblemished record, record of Wolves, but he's never been a player that I've thought, oh no, he's in the team. I've always thought he's an absolute mainstay of the team. He's, he's one of the, the players that you build around. Um, and I just don't think at any football club, you can have too many intelligent footballers who can control the football get their head up and find an intelligent pass. You can never have too many of those. So even if, you, you know, there's fans who are disappointed with him and think, oh, I don't want him to be like our marquee midfield signing. I don't think he's going to make you any worse off 
Um, and I definitely think he gives you an option that a McTominay and a Fred just simply be, he's got qualities that they do not have in their locker. Um, a question for you as a Wolves fan, you, you spoke about Moutinho there and the fact that Moutinho and Neves sort of played as a midfield two together. If you were only going to keep one of those players this summer, which one would you say is more crucial to Wolves or ignoring uh, Moutinho looking at the whole Wolves team together? You know, is Neves one of those indispensable players? Obviously, you know, Jota left, went to Liverpool, Nuno's now left. So that sort of team that you had is maybe slowly starting to move away from it. But is Neves really someone that a lot of Wolves fans would consider indispensable this summer? Or is he somebody that you feel that, you know, could be moved on and replaced by Wolves? Well, I mean, I think that the, the thing to say about Ruben is that he's he's been the poster boy of our resurgence, you know, since we got taken over, since we came back to the Premier League. He was the first marquee signing the new owners made. And obviously he steered us from being championship lower half to, you know, until last season, established in the top half of the Premier League. So I think there's a lot of love. He's the most loved player, I think, at the club by the fans. So they'll be gutted to see him leave. But I think there's a recognition that, like Jota, uh, who, you know, who we lost last season, that he's given us his time. Um, and if he wants that move and he wants that change, and you can't deny that Man United is a is an upgrade on Wolves, and I don't think there'll be any resentment, but it, it would be... It'll be a painful loss. Um, you know, you'd want to keep him over Matinho purely based on his age, really. I mean, you know, he's he's got seven, eight years of top quality football left in him, whereas Matinho's, you know, what, 36, knocking on 36 now. And um, But I think that the, what, what I would say is um, it's about systems as well. And I think that the idea that the manager we've brought in wants to play more open, be more attacking, get on the front foot more. And he wants to be, I think there's a feeling that our midfield needs to be more combative than it has been. And we need more legs and pace in there. So I think the feeling is among some um, that if we were to offload Ruben for 35 million, get someone in like Paulinho, who could who could give us more muscle and, you know, and then also allow us to bring in another attacking player further up the pitch, then maybe there's 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 uh, a logic to, to, to cashing in now. But um but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we'd be very disappointed to see him leave. Um, you know, I don't think there's, there's hardly anyone um, at Wolves who, who would be thinking, oh yeah, cash in and get rid. Uh, everyone would want to keep him if, if that was an option. So you're, you're saying there that you need a, maybe a bit more athleticism. Would you say then that Ruben Nervous is, is not particularly a mobile midfielder? Would you say he's used to sitting quite static? Because what United do need, and that's a key issue here with Nervous maybe, is that we need someone to operate that holding midfield role on their own. So, therefore, they really have to be uh, mobile because we've got someone like Nemanja Matic who's, what, 35, 36. And he was great in his pump, but his legs are gone now. So, we need someone there who's going to be able to screen in front of the defence on their own. Mm. And uh, is that, would you say that's maybe a slight criticism of Ruben Neves's game? Well, I mean, you only have to look at him to, to think he's not going to, he's not got the legs. He's not, he's not someone who's going to be, he's not a canter. You know, he's he's not he's not going to physically intimidate teams and bully teams and get up and down and run side to side. He's not. I would I wouldn't say he's a dynamic midfielder. No, I, I do think he's he's more someone who will who will literally station himself in front of a defence and be and play disciplined um, and, and and get like I say he can tackle and intercept and he's smart about where he go. Where, you know the challenges he chooses to make. And where he chooses to put himself. So I, I was thinking he it's what he lacks in that athleticism, he's going to be looking to make up for in his positional play and just being in the right place, really. Um and, and ultimately I think it, it probably shows that you know maybe Man United want to play more on the front foot as well. And I think they they you want to be dictating games. I mean, if you want to get get up that level where you can be competing with, you know, the the Man Cities and you, you've got to be able to You've got to be able to consistently dominate teams more, haven't you, and, and get on top of them. And I do think if you've got Ruben Neves in your side, regardless of whether he's playing with a one or a two, you're going to do better with him than you're going to do with Fred because he he can unlock the door, you know. Yeah. And, and if you know, I just think what you what you lose maybe in in the what you call the more traditional uh, defensive midfielder role. Um, you know, I mean, you, you, you could say Pompa's got those qualities, hasn't he? He's got pace, he's got power, but you wouldn't trust him to play there, would you? So it's not, 
it's not just about those attributes. Um, so yeah. I don't think it colours my my view any differently. That I, I think it'd be a good signing for Man United. Yeah, I do think that if somebody left me a comment, it sort of like resonated and stuck with me, is that, that maybe the concept of a, a DM and the idea of a DM is something that's being obsessed over a little bit too much and that whoever comes in is going to be more of a, a central midfielder rather than a purely out-and-out defensive midfielder. And that if you've got... Because so, Bruno is someone who operates and comes back anyway. If Pop believes, which, you know, it looks like he might be going PSG, maybe Donny van der Beek can certainly do that as well. He did that at Ajax. A um, uh, question I'm interested in about Ruben Neves is, uh, what's his uh, fitness record like? Uh, is he somebody who, for the full 90, he's got energy, he's got legs? You know, what's his injury record been like? Has he missed a few games? Because that's something that's going to be significantly important to United as well, I think. Well, I think he's been pretty much bulletproof since he's been at the since he's been at the club. I mean, when we first signed him, signed him for 15 million in the Championship, and then he got a kick on his ankle. And everyone's thinking, oh God, he's going to be he's going to miss the whole season. But then he came and played, and I think he's. He's pretty much been available, you know, non-stop for, what, four years? Like I say, the only issue I would have is he did look done in last year. He looked like, you know, he he was really suffering from that continuous football for two years as, as much as anyone else, um, I thought. Um, but that that could be just because maybe, the, like I say, the club's been a bit stagnant the last 12 months and maybe a move would refresh him a bit more. You know, he didn't play for Portugal he was picked in the squad, obviously, for the Euros, and they didn't pick him. And they're still picking a 36-year-old João Martinho. So there's obviously there's an issue there because why why was he not in contention in that in that Portugal team? Um, you know, so so maybe there's a, there's a certain sense that maybe view, Wolves fans view him as being a better player than perhaps the wider football community view him. But I, I do think he just looked done in, and I think he, he's had a little bit of a break now. Maybe, you know, my, my hope was that he was going to come back with, you know, that sharp summer haircut and get a good pre-season under his belt and then and then look like the Ruben Neves we, we'd seen for the three years before. But um, and that could that could still be the case. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's hard to say. I, th- I, th- I think the move would probably it, I, I get the sense that he's agitating for this move, um, whether it's Arsenal or Man United or, or someone else. I do feel he wants that change. I think he feels this is the right time. And is there, as a final question, is there anything else to, uh, you know, I suppose from your own opinion that you would like to say about all you feel about Neves over the years that you've watched him as a Wolves player? Do you think that, um, what's his ceiling like as a player? You know, say he's using Perlo as, as, as an example of someone he wants to get towards. He's, he's 24, which kind of leaves me scratching my head still because he's been around that long yeah. already. And he looks, he looks about, about 40. He yeah, he's, about 40. He's, he's got a proper uncle look about him, but he's 24. <laughs> Um, so he's still got years ahead of him and technically he's what two three years away from him as a peak do, do you still see his development curve going upwards or do, would you say that not that you've already seen the best of Neves but you know is this is he going to plateau from this point and maybe not get that much better but this is what you're going to get or do you see him still going upwards if he joined United or Arsenal or went to a different challenge I'm, I'm fascinated to see him play in a team that's more on the front foot more aggressive because there's a lot, there's a strong feeling that if you put him in a team where they're dominating the ball and they're on top of teams, he could look like suddenly go up a level in people's eyes because they'll really see the, 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 the best qualities in him. And it was the same last season. I think a lot of people, I don't know whether you were one of them, when Jota went to Liverpool, there was a lot of people who thought, that's an odd signing. That seemed to be the vibe from a lot of um, people outside sort of thinking, why have they spent... 40 million quid on Jota. And every Wolves fan, do a T, knew he was going to be successful at Liverpool and he was going to rattle in goals left, right, centre. And it, had it not been for an injury, he probably would have got 25 goals last season because he just can't stop scoring in their team. And I think there's that feeling with, with Ruben that he's going to go to another team eventually um, who's higher up, whether it's in England or, or Italy or somewhere else. And he's going to look, he's going to look like a top player, like Jota looks at Liverpool. You're going to look at him and think, oh, I should have seen he was a class player two, three years ago. So, I mean, I might be proven wrong. This, you know, this pod, this might go down in, in history if you sign him for 40 million and he's like Jemba Jemba or something. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> uh, don't pull it out. But I, I, I have complete faith in him. You know, my, my dad is like one of the most sort of critical guys when it comes to picking players. You know, he, 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 I only remember him liking like Steve Ball, Pele. 
and Dennis Bergkamp. They were like the three players that he would admit were good. And Ruben is one of them. He's like, you can't sell Neves. You know, you, we've got to ring fence him. We've got you, you, you will not replace him. You'll never see the likes of him again at Wolves. So, you know, for him to say that, you know, it kind of, I think that's, you know, um, sort of shows, symbolises how most of the fan base feel, you know. So, um, but I think with my logical brain on, I think, you know, he's done four years. He's moved us up a level. I think he's shown what he's about. So I wouldn't be grudging that move. But I, I think he would be. I said many times already, I think he'd be a great signing for Man United. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you've justified my own gut feeling that, you know, he's not, he's he never really, I mean, obviously he's got long shots to his game, but cool, that's an asset to his game. You know, if you, and if you stack him up, and I did, you stack him up defensively against, I, I showed his stats against, I know stats don't tell a whole, you know, don't paint the whole picture, but they can at least let you understand what characteristics a player has to his game. And I've compared him to Rice and Didi uh, and Kante and Fabinho. You know, only Fabinho progressed the ball forward more per 90 than Ruben Neves. You know, he matched up in terms of interceptions and he matched up in terms of tackles. For me, there's a lot to his game and he strikes me as somebody who, if you bring him in, and we've got Carrick at the club, we've got Fletcher at the club, both coaches now, uh, it strikes me as there's a lot more that, can come from him and he seems very disciplined enough and if he can be molded into a certain type of midfielder I don't want him to play in a midfield too I would want to switch away from that United but I'm glad that I've spoken to you today Tom because you've only you've only you've only maybe you maybe double down on my idea that he would be an excellent signing and let's be honest ridiculously good value because for 35 for, I think it's way underpriced for Ruben Neves I think he should be more than that well I mean if you were going for a don't know Declan Rice, you know what? what Hundred mil, playing? yeah, and it's like stupid. He's he's to me he's got more in his locker than Declan Rice. I think he does a lot of the same things that Rice does, and but you know Rice can carry the ball a bit better than Neves can, but then Ruben can pass better. You know he's got some of that kind of Calvin Phillips kind of you know smart play with the ball as well. Would uh, would, would you say that's an like a characteristic of his game is? He doesn't always look at that. Like, he's not always head up. He's he's happy to do the quick, incisive, short five, ten yard passes just to keep the ball moving. Yeah, he's good enough. He's good enough. He just seems to have an awareness of where players are, you know. Um, and, and he can, you know, you can play the ball into him and he'll he'll knock it off. He's not he's not gonna I don't think he's a player who's gonna get caught in possession the same way Pogba has been in his in his defensive third, put it that way. Um, so you know, like I said, the bottom line is he's a smart player. He can pass and control the ball and find good passes and, and, and hurt teams offensively. You know, you can't have enough of those those players, whether he becomes an absolute stalwart um, or a player who just becomes a useful squad member. To to me, 30, like I say, 35 million to Man United is is that's just a squad player, really, isn't it? You know, he doesn't have to be a brilliant player for that that kind of money. You're not spending 90, 100 million like you did on Maguire or whatever, and, and like players you would expect they must come in and be absolutely brilliant. So it's not a massive gamble, really, in that respect, is it? No, not not at all. As I said, I want to say something here quickly before we, we finish. I didn't I didn't just bring Tom on to agree with me. Like I actually just <laughs> I just I just emailed him to ask him if he would speak about Ruben Neves. It just so happens that he agrees with me. Uh, and I, yeah. more, more more to the point, I agree with him. Uh, as I said, from the outside looking in, I've enjoyed watching Ruben Neves for the last couple of years. I think Wolves has been great to watch the last couple of years. I think he can definitely be someone, as you said there, 35, 40 million for Manchester United is more of a squad player. It's just that we need we need something new in midfield. And to me, Ruben Neves would offer a lot of that. And speaking to you today, Tom, has only sort of justified that idea. And fingers crossed for me, it happens. I think it would be a great signing. Uh, obviously, Wolves, you guys would be sad to lose him. But I would be thankful to have him. Yeah, as as yeah. you put it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's I think it is. A, I do think it's a good move for him, and it's a good move for United. The thing I'd say is, just to if you want to see what it's about, there's a clip. If you go to YouTube and you type in uh, Wolves three Everton nil, it was from the season before last, and go to the third goal where he sets up Jota. You'll see what he's about in that one clip because he wins the ball back. He runs forward. He plays an absolute inch-perfect 40-yard diagonal pass into Jota's path. And that, to me, is him at his absolute best. Exactly what you you know you'd want to see. Um, so that's that's my tip. If you want a little bit more, wet the appetite. 
top tip from Tom. But yeah, yeah. mate, uh, uh, if you want to give yourself, uh, you got give yourself a shout out, uh, let people know where to go. This is Bull- Wolves Blog is your website, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, wolvesblog.com. So you know when we're we got United quite early on, so there'll be a, a preview and a, a match report. That's that's pretty much what we do. It's you know some discussion in the comment sections before and after. Uh, we're on Twitter. Obviously, we're, this is old school now. You know, we're in the YouTube age. Maybe I need to get onto the uh, <laughs> YouTube. Um, but I think there, there's a certain generation of people who, uh, who appreciate the old blog format. So, oh, don't uh, worry. We have still got the peoplesperson.com. I still write yeah. that run that as well. That's where I started. So maybe I'll chat to you before we play uh, early. Well, not early. Wherever it is this season, hopefully. Ruben Nevers is wearing red, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. But yeah. as I said, Tom, really appreciate your insights today. Really appreciate the fact that you give us some time up. And good luck to your season. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, you too.